Welcome to Intune Training, the Stephen Adams Show, the place to learn how to use Microsoft's Intune. With me, Ben. And, not and Steve. <laughs> hey, I did it first go. That's awesome. You did. You did. Good work. Excellent. Hey, Steve, what are we talking about today? Apple Business Manager. So it's going to be a technology you really enjoy and that oh, we're awesome. really excited to talk about. It's um, really important that we talk about it because we've been putting it off for too long. Yes, yes, we have. Um, cool. And look, it's, it's one of those things that we're getting a lot of questions from a lot of people about and saying, mm -hmm. well, how do I do, how do I manage Apple? How do I go through and do stuff? Yeah. So this one here is going to be the initial part about Apple Business Manager. We're not going to go through the whole setup process because we've had to do stuff offline to get it working to get us to where we are today. Yeah. Uh, getting an Apple Business Manager account, I started the process December. Yeah. Uh, and it's June now. Yeah, so it's fair to I'm, say it's fair to say it's difficult. It's a difficult process. The, the 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 timing thing isn't just the Apple Business process. Uh, Apple Business Manager process. We've also had a lot of things now backlog that we've delayed our build process and and recording the video. I'll call that out. Yeah. Right. We we're probably ready in Feb March. Yeah. Um. But to do this, we had to. Um. And I'm just going to quickly share my screen so you can yeah. see Apple Business Manager. Um, but to do this, we literally had to set up a business entity in Australia um, to be able to register for a DUNS ID. Uh, once we have that DUNS ID, it gets replicated across into uh, the Apple Business Manager platform yep. uh, that gives us the ability to um, create the Apple Business Manager account. Once you have that, uh, you then have to create accounts for your admins. Yep. Um, and they can't be attached to your personal email address right. uh, when you go to federating the account, which we'll, we'll drill into a little bit more in a minute. Um, but it's an involved process, but once you've got it set up, it's all uh, it all just works. Cool. Um, what I would say is follow the bouncing balls. If you're a registered organization, odds on, you already have a DUNS ID and you just need to have somebody at your executive level who is authorized to approve that account to be used or that DUNS ID to be used to answer a phone call, answer yeah. a couple of questions and move on. So that whole process is actually pretty straightforward. It's just manual. Yeah. So look, I've got a bunch of really, really dumb questions. Um, yep. There's no such thing as a dumb question, Ben. Um, yes, sir. So, okay. First of all, what, look, why do we need to sign up for an Apple business account? Like what, what is the, what is the primary reason for needing to do this stuff? So, so the primary reason, um, there's two big primary reasons. So if you're wanting to do the autopilot equivalent of, um, Apple for Apple, so of iPhones, of your Mac computers and things like that, mm -hmm. you need to use, uh, Apple business manager and you need to have those devices registered in there. Mm -hmm. So that means that they'll get automatically registered into your company portal and you get forced to use company portal in the out-of-box process and things like that. So is this, and and please tell me if I'm wrong here, but is this basically the the Apple version of the store for business? Yes. Yeah? Within yes. reason? Like it's it's basically the same thing? Yes. Okay, cool. That makes sense for to all, me. For, for all intrinsic purposes, yes. Okay, cool. Um, it's got a couple of extra little things, which we'll drill into, yep. but for for, for the most part, yes, because okay. it's both part of the store for business as well as part of the MEMAC portal. Yeah. Um, okay. So the other thing that I'll call out and why you want to do this is the apps. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can go and purchase an application as an organization yeah. and deploy it out to the device that is registered into your organization without user prompts. If and, and and this may have changed since I've I, I did it with, without um, device enrollment program. Yeah. But if you're doing say the Microsoft suite of applications and you've got eight to ten applications that need to install on that device yeah. that's not managed via this process, um, you're going to get prompted to the end user that there's errors installing because it, there's too many apps installing at once. Right. Uh, and you've just got to click OK until it continues. So this allows you to silently go and install and deploy applications out to your staff. Sure. I mean, that, make, that makes sense. That Yeah, OK. Interesting. Um, so, so they're the two main reasons. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, 
once you have it in management, you then have the ability to go in and control your Wi-Fi connections, VPN connections, and any application configuration. Yeah. Um, for, for me, so long as you have a level of security on there, you don't necessarily need to enroll your devices. But for iOS devices that you're using as like tablet devices, shared devices, supervised devices, mm -hmm. you may want to put a control on there so you can sit there and install, uh, force it to install things and do associated tasks. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll sit down to the settings page yep. uh, and we start off with our profile. Uh, once we're in our profile, we can see our existing apps and books if it loads up, which is a little bit slow right now, so we'll just move on. Um, when we look at the enrollment information, we'll see our organizational details. So this is what appears in the DUNS registration mm. and all of that information. And that's the same with locations, um, which is you have to put in a physical address. So I'm going to leave that out of our viewing um, because it's got an additional PPI in there that we don't really want to go through and have to clean up. Sure. Um, once we've set that up, we can see that we're allowed to use custom apps. We've got our def default time zones. We've accepted our terms and conditions. Um, and if we have a legacy VPP, so I, I know Ben was confused at what this was before, um, but the VPP is that volume purchasing program. Gotcha. So this was what was around before Apple Business Manager, mm, okay. where you have the ability to bring in all of your previously purchased licenses into this system so cool. you don't lose those licenses that you previously purchased so that's good that they do have that mind creation solution there um yeah because otherwise it'd be a real pain exactly okay um so then the, let's step into the accounts component so what you'll see here is we've read we've set up a whole heap of stuff already um and because of how apple business manager is set up you can't just go and remove it uh, otherwise we'd be sitting there and going all right this is the step-by-step -step process. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. We did have some issues with the federated um, authentication um, and connecting that in, uh, but that seemed to be a timing issue. Yeah. Um, but if you do log a ticket and you can work through that with Apple, they've been really, really responsive on that. Cool. Um, but we don't have a full demo of that. Uh, one thing you'll note here is we've got a little amber light next to our intune.training domain. Uh, and the reason why we have that is we still have an account that's in conflict for when we've turned on Federation. It's not a major issue. I've looked into it. It's one of our admin accounts that it doesn't gotcha. really matter. Um, but it's something to always pay attention to and see what's going on in your environment. Um, so from here, we can also see that intunetraining.appleid.com. So that's what we're using for our admin accounts, as mm. we alluded to earlier. Uh, so what you'll see over here is if we go to accounts again, uh, we only have four accounts above our admin accounts. Yep. These four accounts are just what we've been using for testing and validation. You'll note that Ben's, Jake's, and our demo account don't exist in there, or demo does, sorry, but Jake and Ben don't exist there. They, the user account will only appear in this list when they sign into a new iOS device. Gotcha. Or Mac OS device. Um, and this is the cool part is because of this federation, when you're doing the out of box experience, it will actually pop up for your MFA and everything associated to authenticate into the device. Okay. Um, but it doesn't link the profile at the OS layer. Interesting. Yeah. So there's some really cool stuff that you can do with this. Um, look, I think this is just what we're going to go through today is that, that level. Yeah. Um, and then we'll step beyond that in the next video. So um, what is, so, okay, so we've we've gone over sort of, you know, how we got to this point. We've gone over the federation of, of you know, of getting everything federated. We've got our account information. So what is the, what is the next step? What is the thing that we're going to talk about next? So the next thing that we're going to set up is down here under device management settings, mm -hmm. we have the ability to add an MDM server okay. and we'll then link that into the Mimac portal. Gotcha. So in uh, to bring it back to something that I'm more comfortable with. So we've yep. essentially now gone in and we've done our like, you know, likening this to the store for business. Yep. We've gone into the store for business. We've registered that with our business. We've set up all the admin accounts. That's we've correct. done all the sort of the AAD branding and done all that fun stuff. Yep. 
the next step is essentially linking this portal back to Intune so that we can then get correct. the value add of Intune and the the business portal. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's cool. All right. Well, yeah. yeah so, I mean, this this seems like this is the start of a, a series of videos that we're going to be doing around uh, yes. uh, the iOS management. Um, so yeah, definitely. Well, it's not just iOS. So one thing to call out is right now to bring devices in here, and, and I think we just glossed over this, but I'm just going to call it out before we wrap it up, Ben, mm -hmm. is right now to bring devices into Apple Business Manager, um, you can use Apple Configurator 2 on a Mac OS device, yep. and you can bring in iOS devices uh, and associated technologies, but you can't bring in Mac OS, except once you go to the new, the newest version of iOS and macOS yeah. that's coming out in around August 2021. Because this is this reported. is this was. Uh, uh announced at their developer conference right that there's That's a right. new way to enroll devices that it doesn't have to be purchased through a certain portal yep okay. um that's correct and and that's super important because up until then or up until that process exists yeah you had to buy all your mac os devices from apple from a, a specific website get it shipped to you before you could add it into this portal yeah all the ios and um devices so the ipads the iphones you could add them after the fact by using Apple Configurator 2, but with the Mac OS, there just wasn't this ability. Mm. So it's super important stuff that's coming out that's going to make our life a lot easier. And we'll definitely go through how to import a device in a later video as well. Um, it's pretty straightforward, uh, yep. but it's still important to understand how that technology works. Yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. So if you've got any comments, questions, topics that you'd like us to cover around the Apple ecosystem, make sure you put it in the notes below. Um, but this is just the introductory, this is what Apple Business Manager is and how it all works yep. uh, video. Definitely. So yeah, look, we're going to be doing a lot more of these videos. Um, so we, you know, we we do pay attention to those comments. So if anyone's got any questions or they've had any pain points uh, doing this themselves, please let us know. Um, you know, we're relatively new to this ourselves. Um, so you know, we're going through this relatively blind. Um, so it's a good experience, um, and we want to be able to provide as much uh, sort of positive content uh, for everyone. Uh, you know, going through this as well. Definitely. Um, and for those people out there for Android. We'll get there. <laughs> we will. We do know that there are people out there wanting the Android content. Hey, maybe um, even Leon will come back. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Of course, Leon's welcome back. Um, awesome. Cool. Well, let's wrap it up there, Ben. Um, and I, I like these short, sharp videos. So do I. Hopefully everyone else does. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have more content around, uh, around the business manager. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.